Yeah, for the benefit of uh, those uh, that will be following along uh, on YouTube, this is the Alpha Data Science uh, uh, online learning community. And we, we are going through uh, the ggplot2 book. Uh, and today I'm going to be discussing about uh, chapter 17 of the book, uh, which talks about uh, faceting of our plots. So like uh, for the learning objective, uh, in which we'll be going through today, we'll be looking at uh, how to use facet wrap uh, to, to facet our plot, how to use facet wrap, uh, how to use facet grid, how to control scales, how to handle missing faceting variable, how to use grouping versus faceting, how to use continuous uh, variables. Maybe when we have continuous variable, how do we uh, facet uh, this variable displayed uh, in our visuals? So, uh, do please uh, do feel free to stop me uh, or interrupt me at any point uh, when, in case uh, the, anything I'm trying to explain uh, that is not uh, clear, so that I can go over it again. So, like uh, for the first part, uh, in the we're looking at uh, how to use facets in the plots. So, but before we go dive into that, uh, we need to make sure uh, we are. They talk about we preparing our data because before we go into any data visualization, we need to do some data uh, preparation that is some data wrangling. So first, uh, we'll, we need to load uh, the library uh, tidyverse. So after tidyverse, we need to subset the mice per gallon data set. We need to get all the cylinder that is not equals to five and all the drive. That is, we need four wheel and front wheel drive and also the class that is not equals to two seater. So once we once we subset this data, okay, we need to uh, assign it into a new variable called mpg2, because this mpg2 is the new data set in which I will be using for plotting. So once I go back uh, to my house studio, okay, so I said we need to load the library, Tidyverse, so which is what I do do here. Okay, so after that, I will need, need to do our subsetting and assign it into a new variable called mpg2. So this is the mpg2. Okay, so this is the mpg2. We have manufacturer, we have model, we have class, we have highway. So these are all the drives. So when I go over that, so we need to plot this in, we need to visualize this. So once I run this chunk, sorry, I think I mean this, such that once we look at the base plot, so this is the base plot that we have. Okay, since we say the geometry in the first one, the geometry is blank, that is we are plotting nothing. Then the X label, we reset it to null. The Y label, we also set it at to null. So, but uh, we have we have mapped our aesthetics where we display cement should be mapped to the X axis. Mm -hmm. uh, I is also mapped to the Y axis. So we are using a uh, John Blanc. That means we are not plotting anything. So for the second, we are simply doing counts of all the class. So when we check the count of all the class, MPG, and then, sorry, I think I missed something. We are simply doing counts of all the class. So when we check this, this is the count of all the class. It shows that we have class compact, mid-size, minivan, pickup, subcompact, and what SUV. So now we need to go over the facets, okay? So the first thing here we want to look at, we are past getting our base plus facet wrap tilde class, we, because we need to facet by another variable, which is, a, which is a categorical variable, which is class, because we can see that we have how many type of class? We have six type of class, so this, is going to, and the number of column, we, we specify uh, the number of column here to be three. So once I grab this, 
Okay, so once I plot that, we can see that this is, we specify the number, of, this is the first column, this is the second column, and this is the third column. So faceting just help, facet wrap help us to create a uh, sub multiple of those plots. But in this case, we are, we are, uh, we are specifying that let the number of columns in which we want in this visualization, we specify the number of columns and we say it should be three. So R is just going to split uh, those plots into a sub multiple, ensuring that we have three columns. So the next one here, we are using facets, facet wrap again, but we are we are setting as dot table is equals to false. So as dot table uh, by default, by default in the function, as dot table is always set to true by default in that function. As dot table is always set to true, and this is going to depends. This as dot table is going to depend on the way in which these variables are arranged in the plot. Let's see this. Here we have compact, where as dot table is true, pickup, mid size, subcompact, minivan, and SUV. But when we do this, setting as dot table equals to true in the same plot, we are going to have a different way. Now we're having pickup, compact. So here, here we have compact pickup. So it's going to pick this and drop this or bring this down. Then we also have mid size and, and subcompact in the initial previous plot. Mid size was at the top, subcompact was at the bottom. So here we are going to have SUV at the top and minivan at the bottom. Let's see that SUV at the top. So, so that is the that is a default. So that is how as the table is just going to change the way in which uh, this data this uh, file this uh, categorical variable are arranged in the plot. Let me go back to the book. Okay, we have seen this. Okay, we have seen this. Yep, as the table, I think we are here. So the next one is we are having base plus facet wrap till that class. Here we have number of row to be three. I think we have seen this. So we have in base facet wrap number till the class number of row is three. Direction is V. So this one we are specifying the direction in which we want R. We want R to arrange this. So we are specifying the direction is equals to V. So which is going to be the output is now compact, pickup, mid size, subcompact, minivan, and SUV because the direction is set to what V. So everything is coming down to what? To SUV. Why in our initial, we are having this, this, this. So since we specify direction to be V, so this V is now moving to the end. R is going to move that to the end of the plot. So in this other example, we are looking at a facet grid. And facet grid is just uh, similar to what facet wrap, but this one is arranging the plots in a grid pattern, just forming a grid. I think they, they explain that in the book, okay? Where here we are having facet wrap, we can see facet wrap is breaking those plots into what sub multiple. And in this case, we can say we have how many columns? We have three columns. We also have three rows. We can see grid, we are having a, a variable here, we're having a facet here, okay? We're having another one, this is another facet, this is another grid. So it's just going to arrange the plot in a grid, in which, in the, in which case uh, we can have, uh, maybe we have two categorical variable, we can choose to place one of those variable in the row, while another one is going to be placed in the column. So R is just going to arrange uh, those plots in a grid fashion. So in this case, we say we are using drive till that dots means that drive is going to be placed across all the rows. It's going to be drive. Here we have the four wheel. Here we have the front wheel drive because till the period. So every other thing. So drive till the period. So drive is going to be placed 
uh, is going to be arranged, is going to arrange this plot, the, the drive in the row. So in this case, we are placing the drive in the row, which is going to be four, and also front wheel drive. And also we are placing the cylinder in the column. So this is four, this is six cylinder, this is eight cylinder. So facet grid is very, very useful when we have like two categories. So we can place one category in the row, another category uh, in the column. And by default, what this facet is doing, I think uh, we will see that in the next example, because by default it's always setting the scales, it's always set to fix. The scale is always fixed. So, but if we want these scales to be varied based on the data, we'll see how we can adjust the scale. So here we have in another plot, ggplots, we do our aesthetic mapping where we is. Okay, we use Joom AB line. Then we have Joom Jita for the point. The width of the point is 0 0.1. The height is also uh, 0 0.1. So, and we assign this to a object that is called a P. So when we call P plus a facet grid, so here we place this in the row. We also place this uh, in the column. So when we do this, we can see that the row, this is what we have in the row, okay? This is what we have in the column. We have four wheel, we have five cylinder, six cylinder, and also eight cylinder. We can see, our jump A, jump A B line, this is what is going to put the best fit line on that plot, okay? It's going to place the best fit line on that plot. Then the jump jitta is what is going to place the points, the, the points, the dotted points uh, on the plot, which we gave the, us this, but yet I think they made a mistake in our previous uh, cohorts. They wanted to say, they wanted to say, P, P plus uh, facet, P plus facet wrap, then tilde cylinder. So, but they did not call the P object. So that is why we are getting this error in the book, which shows uh, which we are getting this error in the book. So I think I will fix that. So here we are having P plus facet wrap uh, tilde cylinder, then scales, is set to three y. So when we set the scales, it set because by default the scales is always set uh, to fix. So when we set scales to three y, it means that we want y, we want y to vary the variability to always be in the y axis based on what we have in the data. Then the x axis is going to be set on a fixed scale. So that is that is one uh, useful name. Maybe we have collected data uh over time but in one axis we want to actually see uh the variability that actually exists in the data because by default uh what ggplot2 is doing is using scale is equals to fix so we need to modify that then we need to specify that scale is equals to to free y so in that case we'll be able to see uh how how those uh, data vary over time so I don't know if there are any questions up till now. In case none, in case there are any, so please feel free to uh, interrupt me so that I can go over it again. No, 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 this is good. Thank you. Okay. So in this case, they were using the economics data sets and they want to count all the dates. Okay, so they made a count of all the dates. So then, they want to visualize it, uh, that is showing it in form of a time series plot. So here, they pass in the data, they did the aesthetic mapping here, they set jump line, which is gonna be a line plot, then facet wrap, till the variable, they place the variable, okay? Then scales should set to three Y, then they say number of columns should be one. So they want it to be just uh, one column. So they want it to be one column, Remember the scale, they set the scale for the y-axis to be free, such that we can see, because if you look at this data, if you look at this data, this one, this one is from zero to 12,500. This was from 200,000. We can see they are all of different scale. We can see that the data sets, the y-axis, uh, they are all of 
different scale, the value, they are of different scales. So in order for us to see, uh, in order for us to see this variability that actually exists in the data, it's better we set the y-axis to be on a free scale because the, the x-axis, they are all of the same year from 1970 to maybe around 2015 of this, that is economic data sets. But the y-axis, if you look at the y-axis of this data, they, they are of different scale because the default setting in ggplot2 is gonna be scale underscore fix. So in order for us to see that variability uh, that actually exists in the data is better, we set uh, the y-axis uh, to be on a free scale so that we can really see a pattern that exists in this data over time. So when we set that to be free, so and we said number of column is one, it's going to stack this plot into one column. So we can able to see the trend, the pattern that exists uh, in the data. So this uh, year they are using the MPG2, dollar sign they assess the model, then they say reorder MPG2 dollar sign model by MPG2. They want to reorder the model by the cylinder. Here is manufacturer. They are reordering the manufacturer by the cylinder. Okay. Then they now visualize this using ggplot2. So they pass in MPG2, aesthetics, cylinder, and model. So the geometry, they said it should be points since we know we, we are dealing with scatter plots. Then the facet grid by manufacturer. Then, then they say scales is free. Okay, they want the scales for both the X and Y axis uh, to, be, to be on a free scale. But there is still another argument. This argument is always within the facet grid space argument. They also set it to be free. Okay, such that we can easily see then strip.text.y. So, what this is doing is helping us to modify because uh, the text, this text we are seeing here, element text, then they say angle is equals to zero. So when we do this, uh, we are going to see this uh, plot, uh, which shows, uh, shows the model. We also see the cylinder type. Uh, we can also see uh, this plot, which shows civic. Is always uh, and Honda are always at the top, while Range Rover and Land Rover is uh, is at the bottom. So here they create a different data frame called DF1 and also DF2. Then they visualize this, okay, and they facet by gender. So when they faceted by uh, when they faceted by gender, we can see here we have female. Here we also have male. And we can see the color dotted points, red and black. So they have a similar plots here. Uh, here they said X, which is our norm number of 120, starting point from zero to two by four. This one, 120 from one to two day by one. So Z is letters of one to three. So now they now put this where they map X Y and your point aesthetic color is Z, so we can see the three colors A, B, and C. Here we are faceting by Z, so we can see the red, we can see the green, we can also see the blue. So if you are doing this, I think there is no need for us to still show the legend because since the same information is showed in this plot, uh, there is no need for us to show uh, the legend there. So here we have in a data frame, we are grouping by Z. We summarize which X is mean of X, Y is mean of Y, and then we rename Z to be Z, Z2. So then we now plot this with ggplot2, where we have, so we are using gem points. Then we still use gem point data, DF sum, aesthetic color is Z2, and the size is four. Then facet wrap by Z. So when we facet wrap by Z, we have in A, we have in B, we have in also C, which is Z2. 
what are they doing here? I think this is still similar plots where we are having deploy R. Okay, they are selecting DF and every other column except this. So they are saving it to a new object. So then they plot this. Okay, they first they pass in the first aesthetic mapping, the second aesthetic mapping, then join point aesthetic color is Z plus facet wrap by Z which give us uh, this output. Uh -huh. Okay, so here they are creating a beam width of one. Cut width. Okay, remember displacement is continuous. Maybe they want to facet by a column there. So that is why they are using this new function called width. So the MPG two dollar sign displacement by one. Okay, cut, we also have cut intervals, this one by six. Okay, cut number. Okay, so this one will be MPG2 so that they can plot this so that they can now facet uh, by displacement. The number of rows should be one. So we can see those intervals, 1.5 dot 2.5, 2.5, to 5.5 to 6.5. So uh, this cuts, Cut width, cut intervals, and cut number. These are these are helper functions that will really help us. Maybe in our visualization in which uh, we are trying to do, we have one column that is all numeric and continuous. Then maybe we want to within those column, we want to create some kind of like uh, some kind of interval. So we can use this function cut width, cut interval, or cut number. So cut number, let's see this actually. Cut number, I think cut number has to do with, has to do with numeric. It's going to give us number. I want to see how that function work. Go back. Yep, Good. run this chunk. Yep. This cut interval. Okay. So cut integral H cuts. Okay. I want to see cut number. Yep. Cut number. I want to see what is happening here. Cut number. Run this. MPG2. Displacement N. Yep. Okay, so cut number is just going to, let's see it here, let's view it here. Okay, so cut number, you can see it's just 1.6 to 2, 1.6 to 2, 1.6 to 2, 1.6 to 2, this 2.5 to 3, 2.5 to 3, because if you look at the code, uh, we just need six intervals. So remember, we need six intervals. Uh -huh. Let's see where they use it. So let's say N here. Are you with me? So if you check this now, this one is yeah, was an I, example. Yeah. yeah, I see. So what? Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. Since we specify six interval, you can see that it gave us six interval from one point six. Yeah, to but two. It, it, so if you look at the if you look at the notes, it's do you want it? Do you want equal numbers in the interval? Do you want equal length intervals? Right. So if you look at this, this has equal number of points in the interval. This one says. If go but down, this one says equal bins, bins of equal length, right? So there's different ways that you can partition it, is all it's doing. And then if you yes. go up another one, if you go up one more, it says bins all of length one, 
Yes, so yes, yes. So yes. this is that's what it's doing. So that's what those yes. are different. That's what that's what those different functions are doing. So it's different ways to to partition. It's yes. really interesting, actually. I hadn't thought about that. So I think it might be very useful. Maybe we have some kind of continuous variable, then we can use this function, code width, code interval, code number, specify the length. So it's going to split that data based on the interval we specify. Then we can now use it to create our faceted plots. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, what a good. We have seen this. Okay. So next. So let's just go back to the book. Oh, are we finished? I guess so, huh? Yep. I think there are some exercises. They gave some exercise. There are some exercises in the book controlling scales. We have seen scales free that by default, we, we have seen that by default, scales is set to fixed. Okay. But we can also sell the scales free X, means that the X scale is free. And the y scale is what fixed. When we say scale free y, means that the y scale is what free and the x scale is fixed. So when we set the scale to free, means that both the x and y scale will uh, via across panels. So because they are, they are going to be set on a free scale. So we have seen all this. We have seen this. Uh, we have seen this. We have seen all this. We have done this. Yes, continuous, uh, we have seen continuous variable scale, how we can use cut interval, cut width, and cut number. Okay, so now for the exercise. For the exercise, they say here, yeah, they say diamonds display the distribution of price conditional on cuts and carats. Try faceting by cuts and grouping by carats. Try faceting by carats and grouping by cuts. Which do you prefer? So I think I, I did sort of exercise. So the first one, we're working with the diamond data set that came with ggplot2. So aesthetics, we put price. But what does it so, mean by group, group by, group by carrot? Oh, let's Instagram? see. I don't know what that means by group by. Oh, it means color. Display the distribution of price condition on cut and color. Try faceting by cut. Display the distribution of price conditional on cut and color. Conditional on cut and color. Maybe we have to facet by cut and group by color. It might be maybe we use like facet by cut and group by color. Oh, so, so maybe. Go ahead. Let's see, facet by cut, group by carats. So this one I said, faceting by cut and grouping by carats. Okay, so we use zoom histogram, okay? Aesthetics, color is equals to what carats because we need to group by certain traits, which they say we should group by carats. They say we should facet by cut. Then I said facet wrap, by cuts, then I say scales is equals to free y, so that y will be on a free and x is gonna be on a fixed scale. So when I run this line, okay, so we are going to have this, okay? Okay, color is colored. So let's see the data, data diamond. Lois Carats. Uh, because carrots, okay, this is a carrots. So because carrots is like, is not seeing it, it's like it's seeing it as continuous. So what I need to do there, uh -huh. let's say factor, Let's convert it to factor and see. I think the best will be to fill by carrots. The best will be to 
use fill. Okay. It's taking some time. Oh, it's taking time. It's taking time because color is going to color the border of the histogram. But fill, we want to fill the internal part of the histogram. Let's run this. Why did you plot? It's taking some time. Oops. It's taking some time. It's taking some time. It's taking some time. It's taking some time. Okay, the next question said we should try facetting by carrots and group by cuts. But I want us to see that plot so that we'll see which one did you prefer. Because to me, we can see carrots. When we look at the diamond data set, while we are waiting for the plot, we can see that carrots. They say we should try facet by carrots, group by cuts. If you look at it here, we can see cuts is category. Okay. This one looks as if, because when we say unique, die, diamonds, dollar sign, carrots. Okay. We can see that this is better fit to be like a continuous variable. Okay, so, but the best is for us to use that cut width or cut interval to partition this data into various interval before we can use it for faceting. We can see that this, yeah, this that data- sense. Yeah, that makes sense. I was this, wondering we can, about- We can see that that data is supposed to be like, a is better fit for that approach. So this other one, uh, let's see this. Here we have price, aesthetic color cut by carrots. I think the same issue arrive here because this carrot, this carrot, this carrot is better. This is a continuous variable. Becomes a problem when we want to use it in a faceted plot. It becomes a problem because you can see we have 0 0.23, 0 0.21, 0 0.29, so ggplot2, it will take some time for it to compute this because that is, is better. We split, we split this column to get our intervals out of it. Once we have gotten that interval, then maybe we, we can partition it to maybe six intervals. So in that case, using maybe the cut width or cut number, then in that case, we, it can be good if we use it for our visualization. I don't know, what do you think about that? Because this value, this carrot, this carrot is numeric, is continuous, so it's better we partition this into, a, into its different intervals, such that we can have something like this, diamonds, Uh, dollar sign. It's not responding. Copy this. Carrots. Cuts. Uh, you probably wanna. You probably wanna put carrot underscore something. You said. You probably wanna put carrot underscore. W or something, because that's the way they did it in the book. Because now you're going to replace the carrot. Yeah. Yes, and, yes, yeah. And then you want it to do, you know, cut, cut interval or cut. I mean, I think it's better to do it, have to have equal in each in each bin. So I don't remember which function was he had for that. I think it was in the. 
Yeah, maybe that's it. I don't know. Whatever. Orientava X is di diamonds. I don't think you have to do that. I think you just put in one. Oh but, no, you're right. carrots. Oh no, you're right. You're right. I'm wrong. Carrots. Think diamond dollar sign. Why don't you look at 17 and see if it I mean there it's in the book there. I don't remember I think, what book. Okay, I think the interval here is six. Yeah, you I could do six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's work. It's work. Good work. Good work. So let's say four. Good work. Okay, so we save that in this new object, diamonds, carrots, W. Okay, so now diamond, carrots, W. So we can now facet this plot this way. You can see that it now work now. And it, it was, since we specify here that we need four intervals, so now, we can specify that they let the to number, put fill, I think. number of I th column is one. Yes? I think you need to put fill there. It looks like you have color. Yes, of yes, people. yes, yes. Thank you. So we can put this all in one column. Okay, so once we put that in one column, we have this uh, final plot. So let's say let's say scales. Let's say scales to be free y because looking at this scale with this zero point to two, this zero to ten, this zero to four hundred, this zero to around. Okay, so let's put the y axis on a free scale. Okay, it's already there. It's already perfect. So that is what we have for that exercise. So the next one probably should put the x-axis on the free scale too right it looks pretty yes I mean, yes yes I would do. yes yes so i would just put free scales you, don't, you, and you just put scales equals free not free y yep perfect yep perfect 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 oh that's where the yellow one went i was wondering where the yellow one went <laughs> it's like in the last call and the last row, it's like, where are the yellow ones? <laughs> Looks like they're there up right above the green ones. Yes, yes, yes. So we have these final plots. Okay, so let's see the next one. The next one in the book that we're talking about diamonds, compare the relationship between price and carrots for each color. What makes it hard to compare the groups? Is grouping better than faceting? So let's see how to compare that relationship. So this will be like a scatter plot. So we have diamonds, GG plots. So we want to compare color and price, John points. Color is equals to color. So let's see that. We have color here. Why is it slow? Okay, because we have more rows, 5,000, 53,940. Why is it slow? Because maybe I'm on Zoom. Let's see that why that is loading. Let me run this also.
So maybe why that is just going, because this other one we are, the value of carat since we know it's continuous, price is also continuous. So we were just checking the relationship uh, using a scatter plot. So we just want to color, we just want to color by the color column. Okay, so say color is equals to what color? To... I think it's just because it's a really big data set. No, there is a column in the data set that is color. So that is why we specify color is equals to color because we are using aesthetics. We are mapping it because we are oh, linking I just it. Thought, I thought you asked why it was taking so long and I just was saying it's probably because it's a big data set, but maybe I'm yes, wrong. Yes, it's a big data set. It's close to 6,000 rows. Yeah, so it's waiting. It's and just... remember also we are using Zoom. So I think it might go slow. Okay, the first there plot is here. Woohoo! So we can see uh, this plot. We can now see the clear patterns. This is color D, E, F, G, H, I, J, because these are the color. So the same thing goes uh, with the second plot. The second plot. Where is it? Okay, maybe it's still processing this. I think I also run this. So in the second plot, we are using color is equals to color, then we are still faceting by the color. So that means it's going to split this plot into what sub multiple, into small subsets. It's going to split this plot like color this will have its own facet, color this will have its own facet, color this will have its own facet. It's also going to place, it's also going to place the legend because we can see uh, color D, this is its own facet, color E, color F, color G, color H, color I, and color J. So it's just going to group uh, those plots. And by default, is placing the whole of this plot on a fixed scale. Remember, we are using facet wrap. We did not set the scales for both X and Y should be free. They are all on a fixed scale, but we can tweak that. We can also set the number of columns in which you want to display this data. At times you might say, oh, can we place all this in just one single column? Or can we place it in two columns? Or can we place it in three rows? So there are several other uh, there are several other arguments in which we can still pass uh, to this uh, facet wrap uh, function, in which ggplot2 is just going to pick that and is going to render the plot. So I think the last one they were trying to do is that they make MPG data sets. They say cylinder that is not equals to five and drive that is two seater. So once we get there, we save in a new object called MPG2. So this is the MPG2 data set. And then the plot where they put displacement in the X axis, I way in the Y axis, jump point for scatter plot, jump smooth, which is gonna put the smooth line, setting the standard error to be false, method loss, smoothing, then the facets by the class. So, the NAM facet that plot by the class, uh, which is going to say, oh, this is compact, this is mid-size, uh, this is minivan, this is pickup, this is subcompact, and also this is SUV. But we can say that as the table, we can set it to false. If we do this, then SUV will go up, minivan will come down, subcompact will go up, mid-size will come down, so when we do this and run it, we we'll see that we get we get this different output from what we have uh, initially. So I think uh, that is what I was able uh, to learn uh, when I went through when I went through the chapter. So I think uh, next next week, if I'm not mistaken, I think some let me check the sign up sheets. Uh, what do we have? I don't know. I don't know. Gwen, do you have any question? No, I'm fine. Okay, so I don't know. I think uh, Zainab, she, I will get in touch with her. I think she sign up to present the next chapter on Teams. Then 
Then after that, I come back with programming with ggplot2, internals of ggplot2. Then the last two chapters, she will take the last two chapters. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. So let me stop the meeting.